guys! Welcome back to my channel. So in case you're new here, I'm Sophie from Manila, Philippines. I create lifestyle and travel videos. So if you're into that type of content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so that we can keep in touch. And also don't forget to like my videos if you enjoy them. So for today's vlog, I'll be finally answering your most highly requested topic and most frequently asked question both here on my YouTube channel and my Instagram page. What is your camera? So I'm very excited to be sharing everything about this topic because I've been meaning to do it for the longest time but I've never had the time until now. I am ready to spill the beans with you guys. I hope you keep on watching till the very end. One of the reasons why I wanted to create a video just for this topic is because I have various cameras for different types of content that I produce and being the very detailed person that I am, I didn't want to just reply to your comments and messages. I really wanted to give you guys an in-depth review and guide and as well as tips if you're planning to purchase your first camera or you're planning to upgrade whether it be for photography or for video. Before I spill the beans, I just wanted to share with you how I really got into photography. I've been into photography for as long as I can remember. I owned a camera when I was in grade school. I think it was a Digicam and it was just more for taking photos and memories with my friends. And then I got my first real camera when I was 15. My dad gifted me a Canon 350D. It was super bulky but it was my baby. I really took care of it. And I didn't really have any major lesson on photography except for one brief one-on-one -on -one with my dad's friend. So we went around UP and we just took photos of nature so that was about it I was a member of a photography club in high school but it was really more fun than learning so I was really into shooting objects more than people I found it easier to shoot still objects like food because we had a bakery called Sophie's mom if you guys know that I would help my mom with taking photos for our marketing materials I also shot a lot of nature and landscapes and then because I became a blogger the tables have turned I started to become in front of the camera instead of behind it so that's how I got into more post processing and editing photos because of being a blogger over the years I've owned a lot of different cameras I usually buy and sell and upgrade in about one to two years depending if there's a model that I like I've also tried several different brands like Sony Fujifilm Canon everything that I am about to share is really from my own personal experience it's really an honest review so this is not a sponsored post I paid for all the things that I'm about to mention here so I'll be sharing all the links to the different cameras that I'll be featuring and where you can purchase them. Just a disclaimer, I'm not a professional photographer. I'm just doing it as a hobby and as a passion. So if you're looking for a very technical review, this is not the vlog for you. This is more like a layman's camera review and guide. All the equipment I'm about to share, you don't have to own to create great content. You can just start with what you have, be it a phone or a simple digital camera. You can start there and just make the most out of what you have. So important thing is that you start. So I know you guys have been waiting for this, so let's start and spill the beans! First, let's talk about my video gear. The first camera I'm about to share is what I use for my travel vlogs and what I guess a lot of other vloggers use. And it is the Canon G7X Mark II. So this camera has been through a lot. It has seen a lot of countries. It's what I really use most of the time when I vlog. It's probably one of my longest owned cameras. It has so many scratches already and I even lost the pad here. I lost the screw here. There, I lost the screw here one time and it's really been through a lot. I'm the type to really take care of my cameras. I really treat them like babies, but this one is the only exception because whenever I travel, I'm always in a rush. I just dump this in my bag right after I film. I'm just always in a hurry, so I don't get to really protect it. And one of my mistakes is that I never got a protector to begin with. <music> first thing I love about this camera is that it's very handy and light. It's really for travel and great if you're vlogging outside of your home. It's really very pocketable and it can fit almost any bag that I own. This was released several years ago but the quality is still very good. A lot of you guys comment on the quality of my videos and it's really just this. Nothing really high-end. Then I also really like the autofocus of this camera. It's very quick and it's very good except in certain situations like for example if 
it's really really dark then that's when it struggles a bit the colors are also very nice very vibrant what i really love about canon is the real life colors i've noticed even in my past cameras the colors of canon are really real like and very easy to edit and lastly it's also touch screen and then it has a flip out screen here so this is the most important thing that i love about it because as a vlogger i always need to see myself while i vlog because i need to know if i'm in focus Let's move on to the things I don't like about this camera, which is not that many. It doesn't have a mic input. I've never really considered placing or using a mic before until I had an experience with some of my travel videos where the background noise was really, really noisy that I had to place subtitles because I couldn't really hear myself or I wasn't really audible. The noise was really too loud. That's the only time I considered placing a mic, but this one doesn't have one. So what I did was that I got a mini dead cat. It looks funny, but it's supposed to filter out the background noises or like the strong winds so that your voice will become more audible when you film and if you own a g7x and you're looking for something to just even lessen it a bit and you don't want to use a mic because it's so hassle if your camera is so small and then your mic is so big it won't be travel friendly and it would be so distracting and heavy already which defeats the point of having a small camera so for me this works better and it's more travel friendly also it actually is quite effective i've noticed this in some of the videos that I've done. So if you're looking to find something to filter out the noises, this is what I would suggest. I couldn't buy it here in the Philippines, so I had more than buy it in Singapore, but they actually sell it online, so I'll be linking it down below if you guys are interested. The last con is that the battery life of this camera is really not that great. If you own this camera and you use it for travels, you have to make sure that you own a spare battery. So there's actually a Canon G7X Mark III in the market that was recently launched, but I didn't really consider upgrading to it yet because first it's really really expensive i'm really satisfied with my mark ii i also saw a lot of reviews that the mark III has bad autofocus i don't know if it's still true if they updated the firmware and made it better but last i read it was not really that great and this is still better so i'm sticking to this until it gives up on me just to note i don't use this camera for photos only for videos because i don't get to achieve the effect that i want for my photos with this camera the blurry background and bokeh effect Although the opening of this is 1.8, you get the creamy background but i feel that the proportions are quite distorted when i take photos with this camera so for me this is more ideal for videos so the next camera I'm about to feature is what i also use for my travels so it is the dji osmo pocket so it comes in this cute case and then it's just this for small and tiny. So I use this more of a spare camera when my G7X Mark II runs out of battery. What I love about it is the size because it's really small. This is about what, four to five inches only. So you can really easily put it in your pocket. I also use this when I'm traveling and I'm holding a lot of things but I have to film. I just use this when I'm also lazy to bring a camera when I'm out. This is also great for action videos. In my Cappadocia trip, we had to ride this 4x4 and I was too scared to bring out my G7X so I brought this one instead. I felt more secure because I was just holding it with my hand and it was secure in my hand. The quality is generally okay but I still feel Feel that the G7X is better. Battery life is also quite long. I don't charge this often and it can really last long. I'm not sure, maybe because I don't use it so much, but generally I think the battery life is good. This also surprisingly does really well in low light and also cancels out the background noise even better than my G7X Mark II. What I don't like about this camera is that it's so small that I can't really see myself. There's a screen here that's touch screen. I think I got so used to the G7X that I always feel the need to see myself to see if I'm in focus, but this one I can't really tell. I can't tell if like I have something in my teeth while I film. So for me, that's the only con, the small screen. But to be honest, I thought of selling this camera. I actually put it up in my pre-love shop. Follow it if you haven't, but decided against it after because I feel that I haven't really maximized this camera and gotten my ROI. And I've seen a lot of amazing videos done with this tiny camera so I think I really just have to study it and sit down and read more guides on how to really maximize it because it can really do a lot I think I just have to really play with it more to create better videos with it. So the last video camera I want to feature is what I'm using right now it is the Canon M50 so I've been meaning to do a lot more sit down vlogs aside from travel vlogs as you can see and I decided to invest in this camera so I've watched a 
lot, a lot, a lot of camera views and this eventually won it for me. I used two lenses for this. I used the pancake lens, which I'm using to film now, and the kit lens that comes with the camera. First is the size. Usually for sit-down vlogs, a lot of other vloggers use the DSLR type, but this one is very light and handy. I can even use it for my travels in the future, so it's very flexible. It can be both for sit-down and travels. It's also touchscreen and it has a flip screen, making it easy to film and see myself when I'm filming like right now. It's just that instead of being on top like the G7X, it's on the side. And then another small detail I like about this camera is that the record button is in front. It's perfect for vloggers because unlike the G7X or cameras with the record button at the back, you have to fumble around the pause and record button if you don't have a remote. So it's very accessible and really made for vloggers. As I mentioned earlier, I have two lenses for this camera. You're not really limited to a fixed lens so you can interchange or you can even use other lenses that you own. I don't really want to be technical but this helps me achieve the depth of field. I'll just place a technical description over here. But for me, just to explain it to you guys, in very easy terms, you're able to make yourself more sharp and the background blurry. That's the easiest way to understand that of field, I think. I'm able to achieve that effect with this type of camera because I get to use the lens that I want, which is the pancake lens. Although other lenses can also get you to achieve that, but the pancake lens is cheaper. Just a recommendation. I don't get to achieve that with my G7X. I actually have a sit-down vlog where I use the G7X to film and I really didn't like the quality. I'll be linking it up in the cards if you want to see the difference. Lastly, what I like about this camera is the photo quality. I actually shoot with this camera for photo photos as well just more for still objects like food for my family business because of the lens i really like the pancake lens for macro shots the colors are nice i don't even shoot in raw i shoot in jpeg because the colors are good as is so far, I really like this camera. The only thing I don't like about it is the audio. The built-in mic isn't really good. It picks up a lot of noise and background sounds. So you really have to invest in a mic. This actually has a mic input. You can just purchase any mic. You'll just have to spend more because you really have to purchase an additional mic, especially if you use it for sit-down vlogs like this. So last but not the least is the camera I use for my Instagram photos. So I saved this for last because I honestly have a lot to say about this camera. And it is the Leica Q. This is my baby for more than two years already. It's honestly one of the best cameras I've owned in my life. One of the best investments I've also made so far. Leica is like the high-end brand for cameras. One of the, I guess, luxury brands for cameras. And I honestly never thought I would be owning one or spending a ridiculous amount of money for a camera. But here I am with it. Honestly, I've never been so satisfied with a camera. I've never looked back i've never regretted it it is 100 worth it so before you guys start judging me although i think you're already judging me please continue to watch so that you know how i got into the process of deciding on this camera what made me buy it and what i love so much about it past, I had different types of lenses. I owned about five to six that I would attach to one camera. When I travel, I usually bring three different lenses. So it's quite a lot and very, very heavy. So at first, I was so used to it but soon I got hassled by having the need to bring all of them around and having a big bag just to fit all of them. I also felt that I took more unnecessary time to shoot because I would try out the different lenses and you know changing the lenses take time as well. So I think that I was spending too much time taking photos and not living in the moment when I travel. I somehow wanted to simplify my life and cut the time that I would take to shoot by just having a camera with a fixed lens and I wanted that fixed lens to be flexible and good enough to take different types of shots. The Leica Q has a fixed lens of 28mm 1.7. Actually very flexible. I can still achieve the semi-wide angle, the portrait, and still have that blurry, dreamy, soft effect for my photos, which you might have seen on my Instagram page or my photos and my travel vlogs. I'm really satisfied with it because it's very convenient just to have a fixed lens and not having the temptation to try out all the lenses that you bring when you shoot. The Leica Q is actually not very light and handy but it's a lot less compared to the gear I used to bring when I travel. So 
better. Next, one of the reasons I decided to invest in this camera is that I noticed that I usually upgrade and change my camera when a new model comes out. And usually a new series comes out in around one year or sometimes even six months. I always feel the need to upgrade and think that what I have is not good enough and I eventually spend more. Although it is really, really expensive, this camera has given me some sort of peace of mind and contentment in a way. True enough, I haven't upgraded in almost three years and I haven't looked at another camera after. At first, I wanted to wait for a new version of the Leica Q to come out because it was released way, way back. And I'm glad I didn't wait because the Q2 that recently came out was first more expensive, second had additional specs that I really didn't need. So I'm glad I didn't wait and just decided to go for the Q because it's good enough for me. I think it says a lot about a brand that they don't really do yearly releases and they only do upgrades or they only release new models when they feel that the camera really needs an upgrade. I I think there's a lot of thought about the releases for Leica. So as many of you guys have been loving my Instagram photos produced by this amazing camera, what I love most about it is, first, is the quality. This camera was actually released way back in 2015 and that's five years ago and the quality is really still as good. Even if you crop the photos, it's really still so sharp and I usually do that and I have no problems with it. The raw quality is amazing. For you guys who don't know what raw means, it's a file format that produces the highest quality photo and it's unprocessed unlike JPEG. So it makes it easier for you to manipulate and edit the colors of the photo and other aspects of it. I never shot in raw until this camera. I have a lot of fun post-processing that sometimes I really take a long long time just editing my photos. In line with raw quality, what I don't like about this camera is the JPEG quality. Before when my camera was still Fujifilm, I usually shot in JPEG and the colors were really really nice as is. But this one I have to shoot in raw because the JPEG quality is really ugly. The first time I tried shooting with this in JPEG, I couldn't edit the colors right. It was really not savable. From then on, I had to shoot in raw. And the bad thing about shooting in raw for this camera is that the file size is really big. It's about 15 MB per photo. So aside from investing in the camera, you also have to invest in hard drives and extra storage. Also fast reading memory cards or fast writing memory cards. The last con for the Leica Q is that it's not meant for videos. It actually is able to shoot in 4K video quality but I never shoot with it because the autofocus is really really so slow unlike my G7X which is like so quick. So for me, sayang the video quality even if it can shoot in 4K. So if you ask me if it's worth it, it's 100% worth it. I really feel a lot lighter because I don't feel the need to upgrade every single year. I feel that investing one big amount in a camera camera has somehow simplified my life. I know it sounds ironic because it's really expensive but sometimes just investing one time on one thing can really save you a lot more time and money in the future instead of accumulating and spending more several times in the next years in what could be smaller or lesser amounts. So before you judge me on how much I've spent so far for all my gear, I just want to say that I accumulated all of this in so long. All of us have our own guilty pleasures or luho in life and I'm sure you guys have your own. This is mine. Photography and videos spark so much joy in me ever since I was a kid. So this one is really my form of creative outlet and it's also an investment for me as a content creator to be able to produce really good quality content for you guys. And I also feel that I get my return on investment for these items because I use them almost every day both for work and play. If I could have one camera both for photo and video, I would. I really want to be more minimalist and own less things. But right now with the current offerings of the market, I don't think there's one that can really satisfy both photo and video in my own standards. And I also try to spend less. Actually, all the cameras that I mentioned are all secondhand except for the Osmo Pocket which was bought in Singapore by Martin for me. There's no shame or there's nothing wrong with buying secondhand gadgets. You just really have to be careful. At first, I always bought my cameras and gadgets brand new because I had trust issues with buying secondhand pieces because you're 
essentially buying it from a stranger. You don't know what he or she did with the item. But I've learned that if you're really cautious, you know the risk, you ask the right questions, and you do your research, you'll be able to save a lot of money, you'll get the best prices, and you'll still end up with a great camera that does the same job. Luckily, as you can see, all the gadgets that I purchased secondhand are working just fine, and I'm really proud of myself for that because this video is getting really, really long. If you want tips on buying secondhand gadgets, let me know in the comment section down below. I just want to end by saying that when I started, I didn't have all of this. I was just a girl who loved taking and editing photos. It really took time for me to gain all of this through all my hard work. If you continuously develop your skill and you really work on it, over time, you will find the right brand and model that will fit you and your lifestyle. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I was finally able to answer your questions in depth. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below if you're not yet subscribed yet. Leave me a thumbs up down below and a like and please do leave me a comment on what you think. I hope you guys were able to learn something new. I hope you are somewhat inspired also to create better content and work towards finding the best gear for you. If you found this vlog helpful, feel free to share it to your photographer photography enthusiast friends or people you think are planning to get into vlogging or vlogging i hope to help them as well and yeah till the next one bye